Yes, Ramakant. Okay, so please confirm my voice is clear and my screen is visible. Yes. Okay. So, uh, good morning, uh, everyone. Good morning and welcome to all participants. So, we are very excited to launch our uh, webinar series uh, on HPTLC. Uh, so this is one of uh, first webinar series, one of the webinar. So I will be conducting it. Uh, so I'm glad that I'm the first person to start the series. So I'm Ramakant Yadav, working as an application specialist in Enchrome from last four and a half years. So I have completed my MSc in organic chemistry from Kirti College. After that, uh, I am doing my PhD from Khalsa College uh, under Mumbai University. So uh, today uh, our main topic is to uh, study on the adulteration of synthetic dyes. That is, uh, it may be a, a permitted, non-permitted in tea powder. How tea powders are adulterated with synthetic dyes. So without wasting any time, we will start with the actual topic. So this is our today's uh, session topic, food colors in tea powder. So before uh, uh, going to actual topic, we will discuss about tea. What is the tea powder? How it is uh, prepared? After that, uh, what are the problems uh, we are facing uh, for tea powder? Uh, what are the effects of uh, health effects of adulterated tea powder? And after that, how we can solve this problem? So first of all, tea powder. Uh, uh, so everyone might be knowing that from where the tea powder is coming. So uh, the plant which is used for the preparation of tea powder. Light show. Okay. So uh, tea powder, the source is Camellia sinensis plant. So this plant uh, is mostly found in... Uh, all over the world and in India, it is mostly found in Assam region, uh, Himachal Pradesh and uh, in different states of India. So uh, the leaves of these plants are used for the production of tea powder. It uh, follows a various process uh, for the final tea uh, granules. So uh, tea, it is one of the mostly consumed drink in India under hot beverages. So if you uh, see, so this drink uh, does not have specific time, like uh, milk uh, you can have uh, in morning, uh, but in tea, uh, tea does not have specific timing. It can be consumed in early in the morning, in the afternoon, and even if night. It depends on uh, work to work environment. So uh, what are the major phytoconstituent present? Why tea is used? Because tea is rich with phytoconstituents like flavonoids, alkaloids, and polyphenols. There are many phytoconstituents which are very helpful for our uh, body. And one of the major phytoconstituents which is present in tea is caffeine. And this is the important because uh, because of caffeine we get stimulus. Uh, stimulus we uh, we. Uh, if we are tired, so we take tea because we want to remove the tiredness and we want to make our self uh, awake all the time and we should feel energetic. So for uh, feeling energetic, we consume tea powder. Uh, after that, tea uh, has its own natural colors uh, and flavor fragrances from where? from tannins and other phytoconstituents present in tea powder. Tea has several positive health effects. For example, uh, it may, uh, if you consume tea, it may improve your, uh, uh, yeah, it may lead uh, to reduce the risk of cancer. After that, uh, it may help to, for boosting immunity. But if you are using pure natural tea, if you are using adulterated tea and you are consuming it on daily basis, so it may lead to many disorders. Next step, uh, how the 
tea powder is prepared so this is the manufacturing process of tea powder so it start from the plucking of tea leaves so wherever this plant is grown uh, like assam assam is the most uh, uh, grown a uh, tea growing area in india so first it start with the plucking of tea leaves after that these tea leaves are withered by uh, doing uh, by making it win, uh, small small particles small small thread like uh, structures of the tea leaves so uh, it, after this process the next step is rolling and next step is the fermentation what do you mean by fermentation so uh, it uh, it is mostly oxidized it is oxidized uh, to a certain level if the tea powder is oxidized more or very less so uh, it will not have its proper uh, flavor and proper taste okay to get proper flavor the fermentation should be proper it should not be more oxidized not less oxidized and the final process is firing what do you mean by firing firing is uh, means it is a step of drying of that tea leaves so in this process under very hot condition the tree uh, uh, tree leaves are rolled and uh, in this step only the tree leaves change its color uh, from green to dark black color grains after firing the tea uh, powders are uh, uh, sorted according to their granule size there are a uh, different uh, uh, quality depending on whole grain and the powder form so powder form is called the tea dust so it is the lowest grade of tea so it is the remaining uh, part of the tea powder so many times this tea powder which is uh, um, disturb or the size or is affected by overall process is colored is adulterated to regain its uh, appearance so uh, i will discuss about actual instance where tea adulteration is happened in india so here you can see uh, in times of india it was uh, in 2018 september so in trichy trichy they have found nearly 100 roadside shops they are using adulterated tea tea dust that is the lower grade of tea powder so these tea powders were adulterated with uh, uh, tartrazin uh, tartrazin uh, is one of the permitted dyes uh, as per fssi for different food articles but uh, it is not to be used in tea powder so in this case they have found tartrazin which were adulterated for all the uh, powder and uh, nearly 100 shops were using this next case was there in deccan chronicle uh, newspaper so from godavari district from andhra pradesh this case was there they are also using tea powder which were adulterated with uh, different dyes not uh, tartrazin but other dyes next is uh, 10 tons of adulterated tea powder seized uh, from kerala uh, thrissur and palakkad so from these two cities uh, uh, food officers were uh, seizing uh, more than 10 uh, tons of adulterated tea why because they, you can see in the images the tea powders are colored and after coloring they were uh, they were dried so why these tea powders are colored because it require very less quantity of this synthetic dye to color maximum quantity of tea powder another case uh, loose tea powder found mixed with coal tar dye it is in hyderabad and uh, uh, looking on this uh, adulterations tea board had already given a warning for all the tea manufacturing that they should, uh, their tea powder should not be adulterated with any uh, uh, coloring agent whether it may be a permitted dye or it may be a non permitted dye so as per the declaration uh, from this tea board uh, they have stated that in fssa regulation 2011 it is clearly mentioned that tea powder should not contain any coloring agent nor any flavoring uh, agent if flavoring agent is added so they should have a claim but coloring agent should not be present so next 
health effects of adulterated tea so i will discuss the positive effect and the negative effect so if uh, you are consuming food products with uh, which are uh, already adulterated with artificial color it can lead to a uh, uh, cancer means you you can uh, slowly slowly you can develop a cancers and it is very carcinogenic because all the dyes are carcinogenic and the uh, as per fsh the permitted synthetic dyes also they are used to be in specific limits if used above the limits they may be carcinogenic after that the continuous use of pre used tea leaves many times these colors are added to used tea powder not the fresh one but used tea powder are also colored and if you are going to continuously consume this uh, pre used tea leaves and uh, color tea it may risk your liver also you will have liver problem and other health issues this can lead to allergic reaction uh, in some people and you can find hyperactivity disorders in children so their uh, sleep time uh, sleep cycle may get disturbed and the positive effect of this uh, tea is uh, due to rich in flavonoids and antioxidant it can reduce the risk of heart disease it is also linked to lowering cholesterol and improve blood vessel functions so if you are using adulterated tea so these are the adverse effect and if you are using a non adulterated tea so these are the positive aspects so here we will discuss why tea powder is adulterated with synthetic colors why only colors there are multiple adulterants but color is one of the adulterant tea powders are adulterated with many uh, soil also uh, iron iron ores also they are adding in tea powders so first reason for this adulteration is to gain more profit the to reduce the manufacturing cost to sell it higher price means if uh, the tea tea granules are colored so they look uh, very good and they can sell it at higher price because they can claim that their tea powder is giving good color uh, with good color so to attract consumers by making it look more appealing if the tea is more colored so people may uh, have the tendency to attract to colorful things so synthetic colors uh, are added to tea leaf which are damaged during manufacturing process and of inferior quality uh, this i uh, i already uh, told in the manufacturing process at the last stages when the tea powders are dried and sorted the uh, lowest grade of tea powder that is called tea dust so for tea dust they do this coloring and to improve their appearance and to use the tea powder for multiple times less quantity of tea powder can give you multiple cups of tea so for example i will explain uh, in detail so if i am uh, having i am running a tea stall and uh, i am purchasing a tea powder of 400 rupees per kg or 400 rupees half kg and i am going to make uh, 100 cups of uh, tea every day with 1 uh, 1 kilo so if i use its adulterated tea powder so first of all i will get this tea powder at very low cost around 100 to 200 or maximum 250 rupees for uh, per kg so i am reducing the cost of uh, raw material after that uh, as compared to natural tea powder uh, small quantity of uh, can give you more color suppose i am using uh, for making uh, 10 cups of tea i am using around 10 gram of tea powder i am after the preparation the uh, tea has already lost its color but in adulterated tea powder the same tea granules can give you more number of cup with proper color so here you can see if the normal tea powder are overused so the color will reduce but if the adulterated tea powder are overused so there is less probability that it will lose its color and uh, in terms of number of colors it can go for 20 and 25 cups also 
so like these people are adding colors uh, tea powder and they are generating more profit by selling more number of tea but what is the problem so if we are using this adulterated tea and we are generating more number of cups so we are not giving the good quality of tea to consumer the consumer is uh, consuming only the color uh, milk and the phyto constituent which is present in the natural tea it is already lost in the uh, first 10 cups but after 10 cups or 15 cups the phyto constituent for example majorly the caffeine content in it it is reduced because again and again we are diluting the same tea powder only we are getting color and we are mixing it with milk and we are uh, consuming it but what are the phyto constituent phyto constituents are totally lost in this case so this is the adverse effect uh, of coloring the tea powder if uh, in most of the cases these are adulterated with sunset yellow and tartrazin these are not harmful uh, dyes these are uh, permitted as per fssi but it will not add any value to the color uh, tea powder it will just reduce the phyto constituent level and the consumer will not get what he is uh, searching what he is what he wants from tea so fssi regulation on tea here you can see fssi has clearly mentioned in its manual that a tea product shall be free from extra extraneous matter added coloring matter and harmful substance so uh, in fssi they are doing uh, various tests for uh, this coloring color identifications Uh, identification there are many process there are simple chemical process available there are tlc method available for identification of this color and if this tea color are detected uh, this synthetic colors are adulterated in tea powder so the samples can be filled no need to uh, go for quantification so i will uh, discuss about the uh, tlc method so here you can see tlc analysis of color from tea powder uh, in many labs uh, i mean public testing lab and fdas still they are using a classical tlc method for analysis of color from tea powder and not only from tea powder from different food products also so here you can see what are the uh, disadvantage of using tlc technique first of all is the proper separation in tlc analysis the uh, separation is not achieved between different components uh, in many cases it is not compulsory that tea will have only two color or one color like tartrazin and sunset yellow it may have multiple color also nowadays uh, tea uh, you might be knowing that uh, different flavor teas are there uh, colorful teas are all, also there pink color teas are there rose teas are there so that there also they are adding tea uh, synthetic dyes so tlc analysis cannot confirm that all the colors are uh, separated from tea powder and uh, in after separation also there is no proper uh, resolution between spots because uh, if yellow color is mixed with pink color and uh, other blue color or some orange color so you cannot conclude whether which color is present in my sample so these problems are due to no proper application and manual tlc plates and no proper uh, uh, chamber for development so all these problem which are uh, we are facing uh, for analysis of color from tea powder it can be replaced by using hp tlc so here you can see uh, i have differentiated these two technique so these two technique the principle is same but in hplc you are going to get better separation so why that also i will discuss so here you can see when we are performing tlc analysis of dyes so here you can see uh, there are less separation between different colors so each colors are uh, submerged with each other and we, you cannot conclude that either it is a pink color uh, or it is blue color or it is yellow or red so you require proper separation and if proper separation is there so we can also go for quantification and we can uh, give the amount of color present in it so to overcome it 
we have introduced HPTLC, high performance thin layer chromatography. So your HNP is added, high performance is added, rest of thing is same TLC. So from where it is coming? So this high performance is coming because of some controlled parameters, software controlled parameters. So in HPDLC, we have different modules for each and every parameter. For example, the first step is application. Next step is development where we will separate the component. After that is the photo documentation. Next scanning and all. So here you can see with our HPTLC applicator, we are we can go for spot as well as band type of application. So in HPTLC, the separation is very good. The resolution between spots and band is very good. Why? Because that application technique. In TLC, it was a uh, uh, totally contact application due to which the uh, separation is affected. But in HPTLC, we are doing the application on the basis of spray on technique. That means without touching the stationary phase, the sample will be loaded. So this is the major step. And because of this, we are getting the best separation. And if the separation is uh, good, we are we can uh, rely on our results and the result will be very 100% reproducible. So I will discuss on HPTLC system, which is required for this analysis. So here you can see this is a complete set of HPTLC. HPTLC is not a single system. It is a modular type of system. We have different modules. So first two module you can see it is for sample application. Uh, it may it is uh, semi-automatic and fully automatic. Second is the developing modules. So we have twin trough chamber on the top. We have AMD2, we have ADC2 for developing purpose. So in this uh, modules, we can control all the parameters like saturation, humidity, and we can get the reproducible result. We have this derivation process. Uh, for our color purpose, we uh, don't require this uh, derivation because the component is already colored. But for other component, other type of analysis from food sample, we can use this. Next is the derivative uh, scanner, HPTLC scanner 4. So it is the heart of HPTLC in, in this scanner. We can get proper qualitative and quantitative estimation of any dyes. After that, we have a visualizer for photo documentation. All the separated uh, bands, whether it may be dyes or other phytoconstituents, you can capture in different illuminations like uh, UV light, fluorescence light, and visible light. And the last is the TLCMS interface tool. From this, we can uh, elude the separated band and directly send to any make of MS for further confirmation. So by using this uh, HPTLC module, I have developed one method by which you can identify uh, synthetic dyes from food, uh, this tea powder. So to control all these parameter uh, modules, we have our Vision Cat software. The latest software is 3.1. And the main beauty of this software is it is a server client system. So server client system means multiple analysts with their PCs uh, can work simultaneously on one system. So in our lab also, we are having one server and along uh, to that one server, we are working around 14 analysts. So it has multiple other feature, for example, image comparison, it has a uh, uh, profile comparison, it has spectrum library, uh, uh, spectrum analysis also is there, spectrum comparison you can do, and many more. And ma majorly it is complied with 21 CFR part 11, which is required for many enable accredited lab to maintain the audit log. So I uh, will start uh, for the analysis. So here you can see first is a sample preparation. So uh, uh, in classical TLC method, the sample preparation was very tedious and the extraction process and analysis part is also very tedious and without uh, any reproducible result. But in HPTLC, we will start with uh, sample preparation by following USP chapter 203. This is specific only for tea powder. So we should take the tea powder around uh, one gram. We can dissolve in particular water 
uh, uh, 10 ml of water because all the dyes, these uh, permitted dyes and many of the dyes are soluble in water. So uh, after dissolving tea powder, we should go for sonication for around 15 minutes. That will ensure that major, uh, most part of the tea uh, color, color component will come into the solvent. And after that, we can centrifuge the test tube or uh, whatever glassware is there. You can transfer it into a, a, a test tube, a glass test tube or falcon tube. And we can centrifuge and we can take the clear supernatant. So in HPTLC, here you can see this whole process will take around 20 minutes for one sample or if it is 15 sample also, it will take 20 minutes. Okay, after that, there is no uh, special requirement of filtration. You can just take the clear supernatant from the top and you can directly start the analysis. So with, uh, with the help of our applicator, we have applied and with the help of developer, we have uh, developed this plate. And you, you can see here from this plate image, uh, we have done identification as well as quantification of sunset yellow FCF and resin in tea powder. So here in one to four track and uh, seven to nine track, we have applied our standards, standard mixture that contains both sunset yellow color and tartrazine. So tartrazine after development, it is getting separated at R value of 0.1 and sunset is getting separated at 0.36. So from track number five, six, seven, and uh, 11 onwards till 13, these are tea sample, real life tea powders. Uh, it is not a, a spike, it is real life sample. So from this tea sample, you can see we are getting the same color bands at the similar RF of our standards. So the developed plate first was taken into visualizer and photo, cap uh, photo is captured under visible light. We have not taken the images in uh, UV light and fluorescence light because we can easily identify the colors in visible light. After that, we have taken this plate for scanning. With the help of our TLC scanner 4, we have scanned the plate and we have generated this chromatogram, peak chromatograms. And this is the overall 3D chromatogram for overall tracks. Next, uh, here you can see uh, the RF of both standard and samples are matching. But for confirmation, what we can do? In HPTLC, we first confirm with the basis of RF of color. And after that, we confirm by comparing the spectra of standard band and comparing it with a uh, band present in the sample. So I have taken the spectra of this uh, sunset yellow standard band, tartrazine standard band along with the sample bands. So here you can see UV visible spectral confirmation for synthetic colors in tea powder. So here I have uh, shown you the spectrum overlay of tartrazine standard and tartrazine in tea sample. So the spectra patterns are matching. Many times the components may come at the same RF they may have the similar or similar shades of color, but if the components are not similar uh, at chemical level, the spectra pattern will never match. So after confirming the RF value, I have confirmed it with spectrum analysis also. I have taken the spectra for tartrazin standard as well as sunset yellow, and I have matched with uh, the same band in which I found in sample. So the spectra patterns are matching exactly. Next. I have estimated on how much amount of sunset yellow and tartrazine is present. So here you can see with the help of uh, multi-level calibration, I have plotted a five point calibration curve. And from that I have uh, uh, calculated the amount of tartrazine and sunset yellow, which is present in the sample at different wavelength. Uh, tartrazine was calculated at 427 uh, nanometer and uh, sunset yellow is calculated at 482 nanometer. And it was found that uh, sun tartrazine is found around 0.2%, uh, uh, 0.25% and sunset yellow is around 0.37% in the T sample. So after confirming it with spectra, 
we have uh, much um, one more confirmation technique uh, by using our HPTLC MS tier. Okay, just one minute. So in this slide, I will show how we have confirmed the uh, two colors by using TLC MS interface two. So it is the uh, last module in HPTLC where we can uh, take the plate, separated plate, and we can elude the separated component from the stationary phase and directly we can send to MS where we can get the mass of standard and we can compare with the uh, band which were detected in the sample and we can compare by their masses. So here you can see uh, after development, this uh, track number 10, uh, 10 is the standard track. Uh, standard mixer track and track number 11 is the sample track. And I have eluted this component with the help of TLC MS interface too. And I have sent directly to the MS. So for this illusion purpose, what is required? You require a TLC MS interface to uh, KMAG um, brand. And after that, you require a system. It can be connected with any HPLC MS system. Uh, it may be a water, Simard Zoo, and Agilent, any make of MS, Perkin also is compatible. But if you don't have HPLC, so you, you require a non-pulsating pump. So through that um, pul uh, pump, the solvent will come inside to this illusion head. This is the illusion head. The illusion head will lock that particular uh, separated band. And after that, when we start the illusion process, the solvent will come into the head, it will dissolve the analyte like it has done for this particular track number seven and eight. And it will uh, take the dissolved analyte to from the outlet to the MS. If you don't have MS, so you can collect in a while and you can go for outsourcing. But if you have MS, so it is very fastest within uh, one minute, you can get the result of any separated component. So it is used for rapid and contamination free elution of selected zone, low solvent consumption uh, and easy handling ensures accurate and repeatable plate positioning. If you are using interface two, you can uh, elude two components which are very close to each other. If their RF values are very less, so then also you can elude because it will uh, ensure that other component uh, band is not coming in your elution. Next. So after I've uh, introduced into the MS, so I have received this mass data. So here you can see uh, in the left hand side, mass spectra of tartaragen standard and sample. So uh, I've eluted a spot of standard track and from sample also for tartaragen yellow color spot. So I've uh, got similar mass value and for the uh, sunset yellow also, I have done the same thing and I have received the same mass value. So with this MS data, I am confirming the presence of this dice 100%. And I can ensure that these tea powders are adulterated and I can fail the batch. So why HPTLC? Why we are not using TLC? Why HPTLC? I will explain. First of all, it is very simple. It is reliable and it is the fastest technique. In TLC, you can do manual work, but it will not give you a uh, reliable data. But in HPTLC, in one plate, you can apply more than 20 sample also. By reducing the band length, you can apply more than 20 sample and all 20 sample can be separated in around, uh, for example, 30 minutes uh, of development. And within one hour, you have the data for all 20 sample. Next is no contamination of chromatograph because each and every time I am using the new stationary phase simultaneous analysis because of modular uh, system, multiple analysts can work and multiple samples can be analyzed. Simple and fastest why? Because uh, no uh, more pretreatment is required for sample preparation. No need to wait for the instrument to uh, get started. Switch on the instrument and directly start applying and directly start scanning. Low running cost for 20 sample. If you calculate the cost per sample will be around 30 to 40 rupees. And in terms of tea powder, it is less than that also. Double confirmation result. You will get the visible data. You will get the 
scan data, not uh, in scan in terms of single wavelength, multi wavelength scanning, and you can get the con uh, confirmation with spectral data. And uh, at the last, you can elute and you can go for outsourcing or you can go for other techniques like IR, NMR, and MS. The uh, uh, data is more UV visible, fluorescence, scan, and spectrum data. So huge amount of data from one sample. So that's why we can go for HPTLC. Enchrom uh, technology is not trader because uh, 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 Enchrom is the dealer of CAMAG, HPTLC, and uh, other uh, instrumental, instrumental technique like uh, smart cam uh, and uh, NIR instrument, Unity NIR. But uh, along with uh, we are selling the instrument, we are also spreading the knowledge of this technique uh, through webinar, through online demonstration, uh, through uh, hands-on training, uh, which is giving which is given in our head office uh, at Mumbai Mulun. So we provide uh, free training and uh, because of this, we are claiming that we are technologists, not traders. Okay. So in Enchrom, we are giving free HPTC training. So uh, to get this training, you can contact us on the given email ID or uh, call or WhatsApp on the given email number. So next you can see, this is our anchor on YouTube channel where we upload uh, videos on different, uh, uh, till now we are uh, uploaded many videos on HPTLC analysis, their software videos, their different modular videos uh, we have uploaded and all the webinars videos are uploaded here. So you can, if you are uh, miss any part of, uh, any part in toward the webinar, you can uh, go again and uh, get the detailed video on YouTube channel. So thank you from uh, my side for this presentation. Now I will uh, go in the lab and I will show you the live demonstration of T analysis on HPTLC. So good morning all. So I will start with the demonstration on uh, color adulteration for tea powder. Identify these colors uh, in tea powder by using HPTLC. I will explain with step by step. So first of all, uh, first step is the selection of TLC plates. Uh, you can use TLC aluminum plate or glass plate. So for our analysis, we are going to use TLC aluminum plate. So I will start. So for uh, analysis, we have different type of plates like TLC silica gel 60 F254 plates are there. We have HPTLC plates are also available. So as per the requirement, we can select from the plates. For our today's analysis, we are going to use TLC plates. 
So these plates come in 20 by 20 di dimension with the help of scale and cutter, we cut it into different dimensions. So this is 20 by 10, uh, which is already uh, cutted and kept for use. So I will use this plate for our analysis. So here you can see, this is the sunset yellow standard. This is Tartarazine standards, which is already prepared. And this is the tea powder extract. So the samples are already prepared. So I will start the application. So uh, the first step of HPTLC analysis is the application part. For application, we are using ATS4, fully automatic TLC sampler. So we have prepared the sample and standard vials. So uh, we will keep in vial rack C1 for standard tartrazine, C2 for sunset yellow and C3 for tea powder. After that, we will keep the fresh plate is where the application will be done. After loading the plate, we will uh, go in the uh, software. We will fill the parameter in the software and we will give the command to the software and then the application uh, will start. So as it is fully automatic, it requires a confirmation from the software and it will do the application. So meanwhile, I will switch to software also. Now I will show you the software. Uh, Amit, can you? Uh, OK. So here you can see, uh, I've already performed a few uh, plates for the same uh, identification and quantification of tea colors. So I will start from the first. First, uh, in HPTLC software, we are um, preparing a folder. After that, in that particular folder, we go for method file preparation, analysis file preparation. So here you can see, I, I will open the particular folder. In this folder, there are a few analysis plates already performed. So I uh, not prepare the new analysis file. I will redo a previously performed file. OK, so this file, I will just make a copy of this. So you can see in the option, I am going to edit, redo a copy of this analysis. Because I just want to repeat the analysis, I am doing this step. When you go for radio copy of this analysis, you make a new file with unexecuted parameter. So color in T plate number three. So here you can see uh, in this analysis file, we have different uh, parameters so here you can left hand side it is the track assignment so in this track assignment we are filling the number of tracks uh, while id description volume and position and type so here you can see track number one to four uh, i have applied my standards tartrazine and sunset yellow five to seven it is my sample 8 to uh, 9, it is our, again, our standard. And uh, 11 to 13, it is our sample number 2. How much volume for calibration come, uh, calibration curve I have applied, uh, started the range from 0.5 microliter. And the higher standard level is 3.5 microliter. And for sample, I have applied two different volume. Sample 1, 
फोर माइक्रोलीटर एंड सैंपल टू एट माइक्रोलीटर सो दिस वॉल्यूम ऑप्टिमाइजेशन इज रिक्वायर्ड आई हैव डन फ्यू प्लेट बिफोर द एक्चुअल प्लेट सो फ्रॉम दैट आई हैव कैलकुलेटेड द वॉल्यूम विच विल कम इन द रेंज After that, this is the position in ATS four. I have kept the tartrus in at C one and sunset yellow in C two position and sample at C three. The type uh, it is reference and uh, sample for for sample you can give it as a sample only. After this track assignment parameter is filled. Here you can see uh, you can go in HPTLC steps. So first step is the plate layout. Uh, I am using Merk plate, so I have given the brand name. Stationary phase, I am using TLC plate silica gel F254. Plate format, I am using 20 by 10. Application type is user because as per my requirement, I have changed this parameter. So by default, it is considering USB parameter. So from bottom, I have leave 8 mm. From side, I have leaving 25 mm and i am applying a band length of 8 mm there are total 13 tracks with uh, this parameter and i am running the plate up to 85 mm from the bottom edge so this is the plate layout parameter after that for application what i am doing i am filling the parameter in ats4 the sample solvent type uh, i have kept as methanol for application here in this ats4 you can uh, give the uh, filling and rinsing quality if you want to go for quantification work you can give uh, select quantification otherwise for uh, normal work you can go for standard if you select quantification what it will do it will increase the number of rinsing cycle and filling cycle you require to select the gas air or nitrogen okay after this the parameters are already filled and the vials are already kept in the plate uh, ats4 and now you can see it is asking us for uh, to give the command to ats4 now when i give the command continue so, so the ats4 application is started so i will show uh, the application process but i will not show the complete application i will switch over so here you can see after we have given the command through software ats4 has taken that command and it is working on our analysis so first uh, automatically the vial will be uh, identified and first the rinsing of syringe will take place after that uh, one by one all the standard sample and standard and sample will be applied so this is the waste plate the extra volume will be applied here and accurate volume application will be done on the fresh plate so this side the application will be done i will show you one of the application
So now, uh, like this, the application will go on, and after this application step, I will explain. So next step is the development process. So this applied blade will uh, we will take it into a twin truck chamber, or you can you also use ADC two for hundred percent automation. So I will show you the next step. So for development purpose, we require a TTC chamber as per the dimension of plate which we are using. If we are using for small plates, 10 by 10, we have the chamber of 10 by 10. If we are having a 20 by 10 plate, so we can go for 20 by 10 chamber also. So for our analysis, uh, we will go for 20 by 10. In this, in the front of, we put uh, such a Portman number one filter paper and we require 20 ml of mobile phones. So like this, the mobile face will be poured over the filter paper and tilted to 45 degrees. This ensure that the solvent will be uh, divided into both the troughs. Uh, 10 ml in the back trough and 10 ml in the front trough. After pouring the mobile phase, we wait for 20 minutes for saturation. After 20 minutes of saturation, we open the lid slowly and keep the plate into the back chamber. I will uh, show you with one of the demonstrations. Okay. So here you can see just for demonstration purpose, uh, this is one of the applied plate. So this applied plate with the help of, uh, 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 during the analysis, you can have a gloves on hand. So like this, you should hold the plate. After 20 minutes, you can open the lid like this and just keep the plate in the back trough and close the plate. So this is TL, TTC manual chamber uh, used for development purpose. You can also develop the same uh, develop applied plate in ADC2 also. I will also show that ADC2. So here you can see this is uh, our CAMAG ADC2 automatic developing chamber. So it is the main advantage of this uh, ADC2 is it can control the humidity with this uh, bottle content uh, that contains a magnesium solution, which will maintain 33% relative humidity. So depending on our requirement, we can change the humidity also. That humidity will be controlled in this solution. So this ADC2, it is compatible with aluminum plate and it is also compatible with glass plate. So I will show how to load the plate. Like the plate is going to be loaded. Plate will be fixed in the center portion. After that, close. And at the bottom, you have the twin trough chamber, which uh, which will contain one filter paper. Uh, filter paper will have some portion cut in the center, because in this ADC2, we have one sensor, solvent front monitor. Okay, so it will monitor the solvent uh, flow. 
After you give the command, and on the top you have two wells. One is for development, another is for saturation. So in ADC two, we require twenty five ml of mobile paste. After we pour the solvent and give the command through software, so first it will maintain the humidity and saturation. Saturation will be maintained in this chamber. Humidity will be maintained in the center portion, and there is one flap. The flap will uh, prevent the mixing of two uh, vapor. Saturation with humidity. Okay. After both the parameters are controlled, the plate from this vapor will come down and it will start to develop. After it reaches to solvent front 85 percent, it will automatically take to this region and it will dry the plate. And you get the uh, this is the uh, technique by which we can develop the plate. Now I will show how the develop plate will look like. So after the development, uh, we remove the plate, and after that, uh, we dry the plate uh, with hair dryer. Uh, hair drying uh, should be done with a distance. You should not take uh, the hair dryer very close to the plate. You should dry with uh, some distance, 25 inch approx. After drying of the plate, here you can see the components were separated on plate. And now next step is to take the photo. With the help of TLC visualizer two, so here you can see uh, on the top you have industrial grade camera. In the center you have a slit to observe the plate, and in the bottom okay, and at the bottom you have these different uh, four different illumination: fluorescence, white light, and UV light. So, for capturing the photo, you should keep the plate inside this uh, visualizer, application side inside, and close the door. You can also observe this with the help of UV light, you can, with the help of white light, and with the help of fluorescence light. Do this slit, and uh, you can give the command through software, and it will automatically capture the plate. Next step after this is the Scanning part. For scanning, the develop plate will be kept in this scanner for. Uh, after opening the door of the scanner, press load. The stage will come out. After that, you need to uh, place this develop plate here like this. And close the door and give the command through software. Automatically, the uh, lamp switching on and wavelength adjustment will be done by the scanner, and it will give the scan chromatograph. After one scanning is over, you can take the spectrum. Before the uh, between these two steps, uh, please don't remove the plate. Okay. So overall process, I will explain in the software now. So here you can see. So uh, you can see here. I've opened uh, one of the analysis file which we have already done. So after application, uh, we have done with the photo uh, development. And after development, we have taken one of the uh, image in white light. So in data file, you can see these images. Okay. So this is the developed plate images in white uh, white light. In this uh, image, you can go for uh, labeling. So in these labels, you can have whole data, sample ID, description, application volume, and in this plate image, you can also have the track number. 
you have the option of spot amplification uh, you can change the background and you can uh, check the in uh, flat image after this next step we have done the scanning for scanning we have fill uh, parameters like uh, multiple wavelength scanning uh, measurement mode advanced and here you can see we have scanned the plate same plate in two different wavelengths 427 for tartrazine and 482 for uh, sunset yellow so simultaneously the scanning will be done and the scan data you can uh, see in this evaluation tabs so in this evaluation uh, vision cat software we can open multiple evaluation tab like evaluation one evaluation two and up to five evaluation why five because uh, depending on number of component you want to identify and quantify so in the first evaluation tab uh, when we open so it contains five steps first step is the definition in this definition we have filled the data name of the standard after that the concentration that is uh, 500 mu g per ml the sample uh, uh, um, preparation also i've given 100 mg per ml next step is the integration so when you go in the integration you can find this uh, wavelength under this wavelength you have this uh, scan data for all the tracks so here you can see this is the scan data uh, this is a standard and this is from the sample to read this scan data you can go in easy you can go in manual so in this manual uh, option you have the whole data from maximum rf height height percentage start rf start height and rf and height area and area percentage for the detected p okay after this uh, we do integration from starting of the peak and end of the peak and next step we go for substance assignment so uh, like this we will assign this particular band with this peak and next step is the calibration curve so here you can see under linear to uh, regression mode we have uh, done this five point calibration the cv which we got is 1.89 and the correlation r value we received is 0.995 so here you can see this is the uh, standard points one two three four five points and this is our sample which is which are in the range so we have done the uh, uh, quantification so it is around 170.3 mu g per ml so it comes around 0.25 percent uh, in our t sample so this is all about quantification but uh, after that uh, for better confirmation we have also done spectrum analysis so for spectrum analysis we have added one more scanner here in that scanner we have filled another parameter spectrum and in this we have uh, selected a range under deuterium and tungsten lamp we have given the range from 190 to 700 and in this range we will uh, take the spectra of the standard track and a band which is detected in the sample so i will show you the data under the spectrum tab you can go here in the spectrum data so this is there are two substances one is tartrazine standard another is sunset yellow so for tartrazine standard here you can see this is the spectra of st standard individual individual and this is the spectra of sample so if i want to overlap so i will click here so this is the overlapping pattern of spectra standard spectra and sample spectra similarly for sunset yellow also i have done so the spectra patterns are matching so now what is left we uh, we can uh, uh, for for better confirmation we have also performed the extraction of uh, the standard uh, and sample from stationary phase by using tlcms interface 2 so that process i will explain so the identification and quantification is shown in this uh, analysis file and now i will just show you the small uh, video uh, small demonstration of TLCMS interface to how to elude the component. OK. 
ओके स्टार्ट कर दो सो हियर यू कैन सी आफ्टर एच पी डी एल सी एनालिसिस इज ओवर नेक्स्ट स्टेप इज आइसोल एल्यूशन ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर सेपरेटेड कंपोनेंट फ्रॉम स्टेशनरी फेज टू एम एस और यू कैन कलेक्ट इन अल so in our lab we don't have ms so we collect in a while and we go for outsource so this is our developed plate for which we have done the scanning and spectrum everything so here you can see we have already eluted two uh, four spots so i will uh, elude another spot and i will show you the process so for elution process you require a pump which will uh, uh, liquid Uh, which will uh, give a carrier solvent the outlet of this uh, pump will be connected to the inlet of this interface so there are six port valve present here so there is this is port number 2 is the inlet and port number 1 is the outlet so this uh, there are other ports are used for carrying the solvent to elution head so here you can see this is a nitrogen uh, regulator uh, gas regulator which is used to adjust the gas pressure why gas is required gas is required for the pneumatic work for make bring uh, bringing this elution head down and up. okay so i will start with the actual process so first keep the plate here with the help of laser cross hair position your plate uh, position the band here after that with the help of this piston take this elution head down so now the uh, elution head will lock that particular band from the side take this lever which is already in bypass mode to elution mode so when you take this in front mode the solvent from port number 2 it will pass to this elution head it will dissolve the analyte and through the outlet through port number 1 it will pass to ms if you have ms you can directly connect otherwise we will collect in a while okay like this so after the elution is over first stop the flow of solvent take the lever in bypass mode after that uh, take this piston up and give cleaning give cleaning to elution head so here you can see we have eluted this one this one okay so like this we do the whole hptlc ms analysis for uh, for identification of synthetic colors from tea powder so now i will uh, start with the question answer session so uh, i will start with questions for sunset here uh, one question is for, is there from sandeep sankaran for sunset yellow there can be seen additional red color polluting in the sample uh, for uh, the answer for this is uh, no sir it is uh, due to heavy load you can see if it is diluted the additional red color you cannot see and also if you enhance the plate image so the background uh, color uh, effect will come so it is no other red color are there it is sunset yellow only if you uh, for that you you can see in the diluted track first track does it require not require further separation no no separation is required it is already separated what is the solvent system used for the analysis uh, solvent system uh, 
required for this work is n-butanol, uh, glacial uh, water, and glacial acetic acid in the ratio of 30, uh, 12.5, and 7.5. Siva Sami, sir, uh, how many minutes we need to keep the illusion head on? So, uh, for this question, uh, it, it depends how much is the length of peak tubing. If you are using a big peak tubing for interface and that is directly connected to MS, it depends. So, if it is connected to MS, so depending on the signal ratio, you can wait uh, how much time it is uh, uh, taking to start the uh, peak. Uh, and how much time it is uh, taking to uh, get removed. So if you don't have MS, so uh, depending on the peak tubing, you can wait till 40 seconds, 40 seconds for the extraction. Any more questions? Hello, Rinki. Yes, Ramakant. Uh, all the questions are answered. Yes. So if any person has any doubt, they can raise their hand. We will let one, them. One more question. How is the silica gel removed during MS analysis? So uh, in our TLC MS interface, I forgot to mention that in port number six, there are six port valve. Uh, one, uh, two is the inlet and one is the outlet. But at port number six, there is one frit. So it looks like ferules, but it is a stainless steel frit and uh, uh, it is giving two micron or size. So all the silica particles, it starts from four micron. So it will be prevented from that filter. The only dissolved analyte will pass to MS, not the silica gel. So I think all the questions are answered. I think Ramakant, you answer all the questions. Yes. And if anyone have any questions, doubt, they can also send us at lab at direct and chrome dot in. Okay. If okay. anyone has any doubt or query, they can raise their hand. We will allow them to talk. So there is no question. No. So thank you for attending the webinar. I hope the webinar was helpful for everyone. We will end the session here. Thank you. So uh, thanks from my side to all the participants for their uh, patient listening. And I am very grateful that I got opportunity to present myself uh, for explaining this uh, wonderful analysis. So thank you once again. So now we will uh, end this session. Rinki, we will end. Yes. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, everyone.